everybody, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Backyard Bounty. I'm your host, Nicole, and today I'm joined by Stephen, founder and pan man of the field company Skillets, and today we're going to talk about all things cast iron. So, Stephen, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Nicole, for having me. Absolutely. Um, so, before we get started in talking about cast iron, um, can you tell us a little bit more um, about your company and your uh, your cast iron skillets? Yeah, sure. So uh, my brother and I started this company back in, well, the, the I would say like the founding moment was actually November 2014 in his kitchen in Brooklyn. Um, and uh, we worked on it for about a little over a year, um, just kind of on the side <clears throat> to see if we could actually pull this thing off. We could make pans, these pans, the way the antiques were, you know, it's like, oh, the antiques are really nice, modern cast iron, not so nice, why? And so we spent about a year diving into that question. <clears throat> Easy to find out why, then it's harder to find out, oh, can we do that? So <laughs> that's what we were doing. And um, so we kicked off Field Company with a Kickstarter in March, 2016. Um, ended up selling 15,000 pans, which was about $1.625 million. And um, uh, we've been kind of improving and, and getting new stuff out the door regularly since, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, the product itself was, like I was saying, sort of a new iron was comp comp you know, pretty disappointing. We happened to... to both my brother and I had hand-me-down antique pans, probably from our grandmother's wedding or something like that, because they were, you know, they're like 50s, Wagner's, Griswolds, and stuff like that. Sure. Actually, one was a lodge. So was, we had a lodge, a Griswold, and a, and a, and a Wagner. Um, so, um, you know, we're like, geez, this is so much nicer. And uh, my brother was uh, really into cooking. He's probably deserves the title of chef. Um, and I was really into making things. I was doing furniture and leather work at the time. And so uh, we're like, well, why don't we make this? <laughs> it sounds like a perfect pair then. It was a really good pair. Yeah, it was a great pair because he was ready to do something fun um, uh, with me. And uh, so, um, so yeah, we decided to give it a shot. And here we are still today. <laughs> well, <that's>, obviously <laughs> it worked. So what did you find was the big difference? Um, because I have a modern cast iron pan that, to be honest, I, I hate, but I use it. Mm -hmm. And and I also have an old Wagner. Um, and I also happen to have one of your amazing field skillets. Um, yeah. And so what what is the difference? You know, why are the new, most of the new ones kind of incomparable, to put it nicely, compared to the old Wagners? Um, the, the simple answer is that the old stuff is lighter and smoother and that alone takes care of quite a few variables that make that change the, change it from feeling like a really nice object to not. And, um, and so, you know, the lighter makes it just more readily available to grab and handle. Um, whereas the heavy stuff, you know, you just... You're like, I don't want to even pick that up right now. Yeah. Um, and so that was one of the things that we really worked on with ours was like, what is the right weight? Because some of that weight is actually really useful for cooking. So, mm. and if you look at some of the antique stuff, that's that some of it's too light. Um, and then you have warping problems and then you have uh, hot spot problems and uh, it's easier to break because cast iron is actually pretty brittle of a material. So um, you want some weight, but you don't want too much weight and that's that's a huge one that most of the most most of the antique stuff around today has kind of survived through all that and it's good stuff um the smoothness is another factor i mean it's just i think everyone sort of intuitively understands that if you have a rough surface things are going to stick more than to a smooth surface and that, that's like both fundamentally true of just rough versus smooth things it's also true with how your brain interacts with something when it's smooth versus when it's rough. If it's rough, you don't expect the uh, 
anything to release off of it. And when it's smooth, you're like, oh, that should come off. And you know, more, more times than not, you're proven right. So um, that smoothness factor is, has both a great performance element to it. And it also, um, also adds a, a beauty factor which, you know, you kind of look at, you're like, oh, that looks so nice, you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then, you know, just like some of them, what we like to call, use this term uh, in the company called woo-woo, because, -woo, uh, you know, uh, it, it is woo-woo, but at the same time, it's not, it's it's, it's true, or, there, or it has, it's valid. In my mind, it's valid. There's woo-woo, a lot of woo-woo things have a lot of validity in them even though you may not be able to quantify them, measure them, whatever. Sure. Um, and to me, one of those in the older stuff is that it's obviously been handled by a human being um, probably a lot in, it, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in its development. So it's been casted. Someone probably hand-packed the mold themselves with all the sand, and that leads to certain characteristics. And in some of my favorite pans, the, the, the person packing the sand will actually make a little mark on every single pan that's his sure. mark or her mark, but probably his mark at that time. Yeah. And, um, you know, to signify the pride in it, but also to probably keep, keep him honest in his work. Yeah, sure. uh, and, you know, then once it comes out of that, all that finishing and processing was all kind of much more handwork than machine. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, don't, I don't, I think with, with, um, with any object uh, ever made, the feeling of a human being touching it uh, is something you can't, you can't fake really. Right. Um, and uh, that is unfortunately what has sort of started to happen with a lot of the cast iron, which is it's moved into this manufacturing mentality, which is how do we take the human being out? Um, and, you know, I experienced that same feeling myself, especially in the early days when I'm like, how come they just, you know, why can't we just do this? And it's because there's humans involved and we're imperfect. But, right. um, but if you can do it, then you come up with something a lot nicer. And I think that's a huge difference. So, um, so I assume with the manufacturing of your pans that they are, that they're touched by humans as well. Yeah, we have, we're human grinding everything. Um, and uh, we have Every step of our process has very pretty tight inspection protocol. Um, and yeah, so there's there's a lot of hands touching our pants. Awesome. I did notice um, when I started using this, this skillet, like you said, it is much lighter and it is much smoother. Um, I, like I mentioned, I have my, my old pans that I love. Needed something a little bit bigger, so I bought one from Sam's and it, it's been... I mean, it, it worked, I guess, but um, being somebody who has a, a shoulder issue, um, a shoulder injury, I guess, that big pan is awful, and I hate using it because it's so darn heavy, and stuff sticks to it, and it just, it, it frustrates me every time, <laughs> every time I use it. Yeah. So, um, it, but you know, because I had always used the vintage pans, I didn't know that there was such a difference with the modern day pans um and and now i know, <laughs> yeah, and you know also... a, lot, a lot of a lot of that is you know i don't this is sort of a type of thing that i don't think uh is common to be that aware of in your life um and something that hopefully with fuel company we will bring back into people's lives with our cast iron and other things we create which is like you're not you don't want to use that pan you right. don't really know why though right. and i'm like I know why. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about this for 20 years. I know why. Like, this is why. And it's because it's too freaking heavy. Right. And it doesn't work. And it's ugly. And, you know, yep. and you bought it for too cheap of a price. So you don't care. You're like, you ex you're kind of like, whatever about it. You don't want to, yep. you don't care. You know, the idea of taking care of it is not necessarily ingrained in your understanding of owning it. Um, you know, so things like that. Yeah, at this point, I'm ready to just give that one to Goodwill, and it can be somebody else's problem. Yeah. Got over it. <laughs> what, what size is it? Um, I don't know with the with the vintage sizing. Um, I it's maybe twelve ish inches. Okay, so it's just one size up from the one we gave you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's probably ours is. What's our eight pounds? 
Um, you know, I actually, I was curious because this one, the number eight, I wanted to see, because it is so much lighter. I weighed it, and I think it was this one being, I mean, it's smaller, but it was like four and a half pounds, I believe. Yeah. I don't have it in front of me. And then the other one, the, the bigger one, it was like, it it was a lot heavier. I don't remember exactly what it is now, but I was surprised. Like, it's not just in my mind. It is significantly heavier. Yeah, I'm trying to remember my numbers. Usually I'm pretty good with these, but I'm kind of blanking right now. Uh, the let's see here. Well, I know I know our uh, our uh, number ten is six pounds, and actually, yeah, yeah, if it's a twelve inch. Okay, great. So our number ten is basically a twelve inch skillet. Okay. And so the one that you have is probably about is somewhere between eight eight and a half pounds, and ours would be six. So yeah, that's I gonna, think it was about eight and a half pounds. That's going to be a huge difference. Yeah. And our our number eight is uh, we say four and a half. We usually give the upper end. All of our all of our weights are the are the highest possible weight. Okay. For our products, we actually have about a half pound of fluctuation. We actually don't see that, but we give it our, to ourselves. And so most of our um, most of our products kind of end not quite at the midway, but maybe just above midway of half of a mm -hmm. half pound below what we said. So, you know, four, 4.3 is like pretty much 90% of our number eights are going to be 4.3 pounds, but sure. we don't want someone coming to, oh, it's 4.3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. like, Lions, yeah, 4.5, that's what we said. You got two, you got two, 4.2 pounds for free, okay? Right, there you go. <laughs> well, yeah, and as somebody um, with some, some difficulty lifting things, it's a huge difference and it definitely makes yeah. for a, um, an easier and more pleasant cooking experience. I think the other thing that's true about our pans, which is not as quite as evident just in the weight, is uh, our handle is pretty heavy yeah. uh, compared to, to the rest of the pan. So um, we're, we're distributing the weight out more, you know, whereas these little teardrop handles on a big, heavy pan, mm -hmm. That's that's just the losing battle from every point of view. It's like the yeah. handles the handles too small. It's super uncomfortable. You've got a ton of weight out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know the thing; those little stubby handles get hot instantaneously. Um, not that ours doesn't get hot, but it, you know there there is a nice delay for like three quarters of your cooking in our pan. Like you won't have to worry about the handle being hot. Sure. But, so um, yeah. So maybe we could talk um, then about using the cast iron skillets properly. Um, I, I see a lot of do's and don'ts online, a lot of things about what you should and shouldn't cook with them, a lot of things about, you know, whether or not to use soap. <laughs> so um, maybe if we could just start with um, proper use, you know, can we use cast iron on a, on a glass top stove? Um, how do we make sure that they're, they, retain as, as non-stick as possible and just kind of some general use uh, suggestions. Sure. So I feel like it would be helpful to partition the way we talk uh, okay. in, in two different ways. And, okay. and one of them is that uh, so a lot of people want prescriptions. Just tell me what to do. And then other people want <laughs> principles. Why? Do I do that? Sure. And um, the internet is generally awash with attempts at prescriptions. And because of that can get very misleading because you don't, the underlying principles don't necessarily seem consistent from one to the other. Right. Um, so uh, from a prescription standpoint, um, most, there's very little, uh, soap out there anymore. That's going to cause damage to your cast iron pan okay. from a, like <clears throat> just general dish, dish soap. That's a dish soap. I've always had trouble with SH and S followed by, you know, it's um, okay. I, I couldn't say ambulance as a kid and then I ended up working for the ambulance. So that's ironic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny how you have those two. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, so very few soaps that you're going to buy for dishes uh, that um, 
that are actually going to damage your seasoning. You've got to have like a lye in there, or you've got to have a polishing ingredient in there. You know, you've got to you've got to be doing using something really intense uh, to do damage to your, or you've got to be using an upper level soap essentially to damage sure. your pan. One that probably doesn't even exist in the grocery store in the like dish cleaning section, you know. Um, so, uh, but a soap will degrease your pan because that's what it's supposed to do. And um, so when you're done cleaning your cast iron pan with soap and you dry it out, it's going to look pretty dry. Mm -hmm. And um, a dry pan is usually not the happiest of pans. You want iron, is iron, you want to keep it uh, with some sort of coating on it to prevent moisture in the air from rusting it. Uh, you know, if you accidentally drop a little bit of water into it, you know, you want to give it a little protection and, um, you know, it'll also help you, um, you always just want a little bit of oil in there at all times because that's how you do, do develop, um, seasoning over time. Okay. So that's one that we can dispel right away. It's like, you're probably not going to hurt anything with soap. And that makes sense where, you know, with soap being so different, I can see how that could be kind of one of those old wives tales that just kind of stuck around. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah, I think soap is a big one. I mean, I don't know. You, <clears throat> you don't want, we have a little packet that we send with our pan. I mean, you don't want to put them in the dishwasher. Sure. You know, you can't, you should not ever do that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be you bad. shouldn't leave them soaking for longer than a couple minutes. Um, okay. You, when you first get one of our pans, you should uh, kind of avoid cooking acidic foods and avoid cooking anything that's going to simmer in salty liquid for a while because all those uh, salt, you know, you, you know what salt does to iron, right? It right. rusts it. So, um, you know, you probably see that with your cars out there, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, more of a problem where I'm from, I guess. Yeah. Um, the uh, yeah, and and acids tend to eat away at the fats that are part of the seasoning, so um, those are going to tend to act like a solvent on your pan, and um, so those are kind of some of the the prescriptions of do's and don'ts. If you take care of your pan, you know, I would say for me, it took about three months of. Um, you know, being diligent on my maintenance regime. Mm -hmm. And after the end of that, I started being able to cook the liquids and the salty, uh, the salty liquids and the acids in there and not having any issues because I developed this, you know, really thick, you know, not thick, but really strong seasoning there. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I think um, there's a lot to be said for like the prescription there versus the principles there. Um, and uh, for prescription, we actually, I, because I was like realizing that most people were rolling their eyes at me when I started talking about principles, <laughs> I was like, fine, I'll, I'll give you some prescriptions and I'm going to, and, and here's your prescription and, and here's, here's the exact oil you should use. I've just made it for you. It's this, it's our, it's our own seasoning formula. It's got some beeswax and some, some, uh, a certain kind of uh, uh, sunflower oil, and then a, and then some grapeseed oil in it. It's like no, that's going to be the the best possible thing to use. And here is a and you got to use this chainmail scrubber because that's going to clean your pan. It's also in a great way because it's gonna it's gonna clean off your pan. It's not going to be so aggressive that it's going to remove things that that could turn into good seasoning. So if you have like one of those. Kind of, I don't know. There's you get spots on your pan when you're cooking, and some of that stuff you should leave because it will eventually form seasoning. And and the cast iron scrubber, or not, or sorry, the chainmail scrubber, does a great job at like, kind of, uh, vetting anything that's stuck onto your pan. It's like, is this should this stay or should? <laughs> and and, this, and it's like, well, it seems the stainless the stainless steel scrubber seems to say yes, it should stay. <laughs> um, so then you leave it. And, um, and then the other thing that'll do is um, it'll also abrade or scuff your, your, the surface of your pan just ever so slightly so that when you cook next time, there's just a little bit of texture for, um, 
for your next layer of seasoning to kind of grab onto. Okay. Um, and so I have developed that prescriptive methodology for everyone to use because, and like, if you basically follow that to a T for three months, you're going to have really great seasoning on your fan. Sure. So, so. if, if somebody is not able to, um, to purchase your seasoning, uh, product, is there any oil that absolutely shouldn't be used or can really any oil be used to season a pan? I would never... Here's my here's my principle. Good. <laughs> Principally, there is the best oils are high in polyunsaturated fats. That's what you want for to perform seasoning. Uh, prescriptively, I wouldn't buy. I wouldn't. Ha I wouldn't keep an oil in your house that you're not already using for cooking. Otherwise, sure. Because it's just I don't. It's not like oh, here's my seasoning oil bottle, right? Right. Like if you're if you're not. You know, basically, you're either on my, you're either going to jump into what I'm <laughs> telling you, or like, just be super practical. Like, don't, right. don't, don't, don't do this like middle zone spot so much. Um, sure. So the higher in polyunsaturated fat, the better. But I don't know if your users are like this, but um, or your uh, your uh, audience is like this. But I know that I personally am not on the polyunsaturated oils train. I'm like, mm, I don't think so. I want to eat that stuff, you know, and I'm, I'm actually on the saturated fat train. Unfortunately, the saturated fats um, generally aren't going to be very good for seasoning. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and the beeswax thing, that's interesting. I, I would never have thought beeswax on, uh, on the pan just because yeah. it kind of has a lower, um, lower smoke point. Yeah, so, totally. But obviously that doesn't cause an issue. No, so, you know, that's one of the things, uh, some of the feedback we get is like, oh, I don't like to taste this beeswax. Like, well, then you're, you're really, you're, 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 uh, you're leaving way too much on the pan. Oh, sure. Um, you need, when you coat your pan right before you put it away, you are putting a tiny bit on, I think I specified like a quarter or eighth of a teaspoon, and that actually gets both the inside and outside of your pan, um, and uh, and then once that's all down, you actually are going to go ahead and grab a dry either paper towel or towel, whatever you got, and you're going to wipe it to a matte finish after that. So the amount of uh, beeswax or anything even on that pan is very, 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 very thin. So it do you be... heat up the pan before you put that on? Uh, you do. You heat up the pan because you're going to be drying the pan at that point usually. Oh, okay. Like you cook. You put it under the water to get some of the, the schmutz off. You've got your chainmail scrubber. Actually, you've got your brush to get the big schmutz off, and then you've got your chainmail scrubber to do your, uh, you know, fine um, scrubbing and abrading. And then now you've got a wet pan, and you don't want to have a wet pan for very long, so you put that on your oven and you dry that out. Gotcha. And that gives you dry in a nice hot, hopefully not too hot, but a hot, like a hot pan. And then you can throw our put our stuff on there. And, you do the once wax on, wax off, you know. Makes Maybe sense. We'll use that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love video. For those of you listening, you have to watch this one on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so what about um using the pan? Can can you use it on pretty much any surface, you know, uh nowadays glass top things and um you know, electric is becoming ever popular. I'm I'm gonna just assume yes because I use it and I would never buy another glass top again. Um, but is it uh, is it generally acceptable to use them on on glass top or any surface that really shouldn't use cast iron on? Uh, our cast iron is usable on on every surface. Um, the concerns about surfaces are usually. Um, I think there's there's really only two concerns that I can truly highlight. I mean, with glass, it's like, oh, you're going to break your glass. It's like, well, then be careful. Like, right. <laughs> don't use a heavy pan. Yeah, like don't slam your pan down. What it's it's glass. You know it's glass, so just don't do that. How right. about that? And then it's like, oh, scratching. It's like, well, you know, again, if you are so obsessed about scratching, what do you use on there? Right. You know what what won't scratch. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so be careful. It's fine. Um, we uh, also 
you know, I think one of the concerns that people have with like induction stoves with our pans is that uh, uh, we have a heat ring around. And so they're like, oh, it's not touching the surface of the heat of the glass. And um, this is one of those things that John Q. Public doesn't really ever know, which is there's actually no such thing as flat. <laughs> there is no such thing as flat in cookware or in this application. You know, sure. if, you go to, if you go to a machine shop, you can find they have those stones, flat stones. And even those are only flat to within a certain tolerance. Now that's mm -hmm. extremely flat tolerance, mind you, but it's, a, you know, it's a tolerance. And same, same thing with metal. Uh, so metal has more tolerance built in. And so, um, you know, every cookware out there, uh, everything you're cooking over a stove with is either going to have a heat ring like ours, or if you actually measure it, if you measure the bottom, it's going to have a shape like this, where the edges, you know, it, like if I don't know how to describe this, but there seems to be kind a, of you know, what concave. So the middle yeah, is. like so it's like say this is a this is a pot, like it's going to be up in the middle right here a little bit, mm -hmm. so that it sits flat. Interesting. Because um, if it's like this, if it's if it's down, then it's gonna it's gonna spin. Right. On purpose, be a spinner. So, um, so yeah, flat doesn't exist. Um, but if you uh, uh, you kind of look into the the tolerances required for um, for electromagnetic heating to work, it's um, it's about fifty five thousandths, I think. And uh, we just looked that up, and you know, all of our pans are under. 55 thousandths away from the burner. So, All right. so you're good to go. Awesome. I didn't even think about the induction heating. That's, that's a little too advanced for me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, you know, I know that induction is uh, really gaining popularity um, for, for environmental reasons and, right. and, and, but it's like, man, <sighs> I hope it gets better. You know, I hope I hope that technology improves because it's just not that fun. Hopefully, well, at least we know that your pans will work with it, though. <laughs> so it'll stand the test of time. Yes, right. <laughs> do we'll you <laughs> do you have any tips for anybody? Um, let's say they they find grandma's old rusty skillet or um, you know what have you. How is there a way to turn that rusty skillet into something usable? There's always a way. There is just a There's question of your will. Um, <laughs> sure. The, uh, you know, there's there's good old fashioned elbow grease, and uh, I don't do that anymore. But I don't discourage anyone because I did it. At, I've done it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> um, you've got to be careful not to sand the pan, though, or else you'll end up creating a surface which is so smooth that you can't get seasoning to form on it. And um, that will be um, sort of the telltale of a pan that won't season is copper colored seasoning. Hmm. Um, and um, yeah, because it's just it's just like too smooth to really get there. Um, so maybe wire brush and some patience sort of thing? Pretty much. Gotcha. Um, but if you maybe do that once and then you get the bug and you happen to live in an area where you feel like there's a lot of grandma's rusty pans around <laughs> you never know <laughs> then, then you need then you should go you should bump it up a, a notch in intensity and uh you know i know you can use the oven cleaning cycle i've used that before um it works but it's kind of i don't know it's frustrating but it works because uh it feels like the pan wants to instantly rust that's kind of a problem you're always going to have though when you're doing restoration. Um, you know, once you've got it to bare iron, basically, uh, the pan's like super wants to rust like immediately. Um, sure. So oven cleaning cycle work. Jeff Rogers walks people through that on one of his videos pretty um, definitively. So, uh, and then if you want to get even more sophisticated, you can dump your pans into a lye bath. Oh, okay. And lye is the ingredient in what that what used to be in soap, which destroyed seasoning. So, right. um, 
you can dump it in there, let it soak for a while. I've, I'm, I'm, people have had good success doing that. Um, I've never done it and I probably would never bother, but that's because I've taken it to the maximum level right. where I just jumped straight to the, you know, after doing it, <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is dumb. So I, I just went straight for the, the jugular and created a, uh, electrolysis tank. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And so that's a fun, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a project to set something up like that. Um, it doesn't have to be, honestly, you could, it can be pretty simple. It just kind of depends where you live, I think. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like if living in the country, pretty simple to set up an electrolysis tank. It's like, yeah. yeah you know, you've got a battery <laughs> charger, right? Or you've got a bunch of other like rusty, crappy iron that you won't mind get making even worse. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like you kind of got all, you've got a bucket. Right. Um, but um, yeah, if you're in the city sometimes or something, it's like, I don't have any of that stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a place to put this outside for the off gassing even. So I don't know. Um, but anyway, that methodology will is by far the best and most elegant. Gotcha. I hadn't and heard of that one. Definitely worth setting up if you want to do more than five cans. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea. So I, I just learned something. I learned lots of things, but that's another thing I learned. <laughs> So is there any um, other kind of common misconceptions or things that you've heard about cast iron that, um, that you feel you need to set the record straight on? The first thing that comes to my mind, honestly, I feel like I could probably ne never stop talking about that in some way. So, but the first thing that comes to my mind is all these carbon steel folks out there. Who keep wanting to be like carbon steel is better than cast iron and la da 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 and i'm like i don't think that's true and i think it's not true because i i just think that um carbon steel never really seasons that well um and uh very i think there's there's a couple companies that are making carbon steel that I'm like, yes, I would, I want that in my kitchen for sure. You know, mm -hmm. Blank Creatives makes beautiful stuff. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I'd like one of those. But then you've got other companies being like, why are you bothering with that cast iron skillet? You should be <laughs> <carbon> steel. <laughs> and I'm like, because they're not, they're not the same. You don't get the same benefits that you do from the, from the cast iron. And, and honestly, one of those is just like the enjoyment of using it. Sure. Um, you know, if, if, if you, if your carbon steel is constantly, um, you know, never developing like a nice, di nice dark seasoning, um, I want to say almost every handle on, on, on carbon steel pans is, is not that enjoyable, at least for my hand. I'm like, what is this? Not it. There's room for both basically. Sure. And I, you know, I would never, well, I would, I would say that cast iron is better than carbon steel, but I understand that the benefits of car I understand some of the benefits of carbon steel as well. Sure. So. Well, there's something to be said about the uh, nostalgia and something that's lasted, you know, for, for so many decades and, and. Uh... Yeah. Maybe you should be the guinea pig here and get back to me. I think I'll get right on that. <laughs> you, you you go ahead and get yourself a, like a I don't know maybe a double handled carbon steel twelve inch or fourteen inch pan, and let me know how you like it. <laughs> if you pay for it, I would be glad to. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so can you uh, remind us all once again of your website and then where we can find some more information about uh, you know cast iron care and use. Yeah, so uh, fieldcompany.com, nice and simple. Uh, we have a, um, let's just take a look at this thing so I can say it live, explore tab. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of information there uh, about how to use it, how to get started, what's, you know, some, some, some we're doing. We have tons of recipes. We even have some recipes on, uh, you know, what, how to, how to start season you uh, season through cooking recipes that are really good um and you know we we also um 
I think we do a good job sending emails that aren't terrible uh, to our customers. You know, in fact, we get a lot of comments saying how much they, how much everyone appreciates them. So, um, you know, we can get you up and running on that. So, fieldcompany.com for all that. It's an online world these days. So, yeah, yes, we're, yes. we're there and trying to build a whole, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Not environment. Uh, not, I've been actually struggling to find this word for a while. Empire? <laughs> not, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's my brother. Um, trying to build a whole, like, a calming community. Climate, uh, environment. Um, <laughs> ah, shit. Well, I'll, it'll come to me after I hang up. Of course. <laughs> That's usually how it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Stephen, thank you so much. I really enjoyed your time. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your information with us today. And thank you for sending us the wonderful skillet. I absolutely love it. And I'm so excited to start using it. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, enjoy that thing. I will. <laughs> Right. And for those listening, thank you so much for joining me for another episode. Be sure to check uh, the links in the description. We will add all of those in there, and we'll see you again next week. Uh -huh.